Hello there, folks. Welcome to another comments video. As you can see here, the first comment comes from Niles Rivers. And they say, LAT space IN equals LAT armor equals language of war. Now, before I even try to certify what in the heck this guy's trying or girl are trying to say, why do folks feel that they can leave comments like this and like that's some sort of closure? Because it's not, especially not on this channel. But let's play along here. So they're claiming that, you know, the word Latin, which is a language, supposedly a dead language, that the, the word L-A-T means armor. And so they're saying that Lat is a language of war. How do you get war out of armor? If I were to be the type of individual to jump to presumption assumption, I would think it's more like a language of protection, of safety, because armor protects you, doesn't it? But I digress. I'm not coming in here with my powder wet. No, 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 my powder's dry because this individual has not provided a continuance of the evidence for what they're claiming. And from my knowledge, this is not what Latin means when you actually look it up in an etymology dictionary. Do you think I'm wrong? Am I on the wrong track? Let's find out. Latin, Roman, belonging to Latium, possibly from Proto-Indo-European root Stella to spread, extend, with a sense of flat country. Old folk etymology connected it with Latin to lie hidden in a fable of Saturn. Now, folks, that's an entirely different can of worms right there. But it's a very interesting one if you choose to follow it. Bottom line, to stay on course here, to not divert from the purpose and function of why I looked this word up, nowhere do I see anything about Latin or lat meaning armor. Okay? So, this is a load of complete and utter horse pooey. And then they also say the letter T means firm, firmament. Really? Is that what that means? Shall we look it up? Here you can see the letter T is the 20th letter of the English alphabet. Uh, T, modern alphabet. T, the letter formerly was branded on the hand of a convicted thief. Nothing about firmament. Nothing. And then they put con. What are they trying to say there? Well, are they trying to imply that this is all a con? Well, if they're referring to con in the modern sense, as if it's some sort of trick or scheme or deception, well, Niles Rivers, yes, you are definitely perpetrating a con. Are you a con artist? Because nothing you said here is true. Nothing is based on a continuance of the evidence. It's almost as if you're pulling this out of your butt, which you may be. You may be into that type of stuff. By the way, folks, C-O-N actually means together and is positive performance. As you can see here, together with, I rest my case. At the end of the day, though, folks, comments like this are enormous fun for me. Because for whatever reason, a lot of folks out there think they know something and they have a continuous to the evidence for something when they really don't. And what I mean by continuance of the evidence in like this sort of uh, 
context is that this individual, I'm guessing, someone probably told them what they, uh, they're conveying here. They're probably parroting something they heard someone else say that can't be proven or backed up. And this individual certainly did not go to any length to prove what they were saying. And they certainly didn't go through the consideration of sharing it with us. So I just thought I'd share this with you as to how I audit and do forensics on everything that comes past my eyes. Next comment comes from Jaharitik. And they say, they block me right away when I ask questions they don't like because I know what they are doing and claiming is false as well as they do not. They are telling to scam people, so I'm not welcome, lol. Let's read that again. They block me right away when I ask questions they don't like because I know what they are doing and claiming is false as well as they do not, they are telling to scam people, so I'm not welcome, lol. Alrighty then. Next comment comes from Harris Diz, and they say, Jason, do you have a video explaining why the name is not separated from colon? However, surname is, I believe I'm understanding the concept wrong. Cheers. Uh, you, you might be correct in your assessment there, Harris, because I've done multiple, numerous videos on the correct way to write a name and why the spacing of the colons is so critical. If, however, you don't feel it's important enough to look that up, as in doing a simple YouTube search on my channel, you put in correct name or just name and a multitude of videos will come up, well then... I mean, you know, I, I'm not really a spoon feeder. However, I made an exception for you. And in my Kuleana to your comment, I did post a link to one of those multitudes of videos that could give you closure on your question. Thank you. The next comment from Jay Rumbleseed is, in relation to a stream I did on Colin David Ivan Wayne Colin Miller's birthday, where I was talking about why David was a 92nd degree, or why David claimed to be a 92nd degree Mason, why he, the reasons he gave for that. And uh, Jay said, he, as in David, made this claim based on his work within the Freemason Society. His claim was that he rewrote all of the Freemason literature. Now, first of all, when I hear someone say all of something, that immediately gives me a red flag. Because how can anyone possibly prove all? How do you know how much Freemason literature there is? Because I'm telling you, buddy, from what I've seen, and I've only seen probably 25% of it, there's a lot. So I'm not sure how David could have rewrote all of it. But in this case, I have only ever heard David say one book, one Freemason book that he rewrote, which it's not even a Freemason book because, it, I mean, it may be used by the Freemasons, but it is not exclusively a Freemason book. It's available to the public. And that's The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. That's the book that David put two thirds of the missing words in allegedly. And that's why he claimed 92nd degree Mason based upon knowledge. And so I asked him to give a continuance of the evidence for his claim that David rewrote all Masonic literature. And they respond, I only found his original claim, which he states of this video, which is that he broke the math interface and that allowed him to claim the 92nd degree Mason. However, I am sure that he specified further that it was because he rewrote the text of the Masonic Lodge that allowed him to ingress into the 92 degree of Freemasonry. 
So it's good that you're sure, but if you want the rest of us to be sure, you need to provide some specific evidence of David saying, hey, I rewrote all the Freemasonic literature. And this individual right here, Radataher, 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 Radataher. This individual always types in all caps and always has very entertaining things to say. And they said, loyalty is your virtue. Respect your honor to David. I am sad to say that my meeting with him were of a Hitler. Sorry, David was not or ever the creator of the grammar. A woman is. Your loyalty is your virtue. Your honor to David make you humble. The David I meet. Okay, yeah. So they're claiming that uh, quantum grammar was uh, creator of uh, was created by a female, I guess. Again, of course, they don't offer any proof of anything they say ever. There are other comments where they claim Russell J. Gould is stalking them and that uh, Winifred Adams is, is uh, commenting on my site using a nom de guerre, which, I mean, of course, it could be possible, but I highly doubt it. Um, I don't know why an individual like this would ever think that I would ever take anything they say seriously. And Jay Rumbleseed has yet to provide any specific link to back up his claim of David rewriting all Masonic literature. But maybe someday we'll, we'll see that. But probably not before Jesusito comes back. Next comment comes from DRSHN75, and they say, well, but this... MR period glass, all caps, look like a typical sick troll debunker only discrediting and going into deep nonsense details. One of these individuals who think details are nonsense. Just to avoid the people's making the connection to the big picture, quantum blah, 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 people like this help you choosing the people's court of Terra Australis. Keep it up. So my Kuliana was, I won't even leave a sarcastic comment because I'm not sure I comprehend your comment. Suffice to say, if you aren't prepared to go full on 100% into the grammar, then you're just fake as hell and can go back to Narnia or Oz or whatever land of make-believe you came from. If you can't tell, I get real joy out of folks who like to uh, pass judgments like this with zero or less than zero knowledge on what they're talking about from my perception of course next comment comes from alpha to you lmfao you oh you're being so damn pedantic do you know what pedantic means folks it basically means detail oriented get off your high horse knowing better and my kuleana is lmmfao Oh, so suddenly grammatical details. Oh, and there you got a typo, folks. Stop and correct. That N should be an M. Also, suddenly grammatical details don't matter. And because some folks know something you don't, it's a high horse. As you offered me advice, I return the favor. Either quit being a lazy, ignorant wannabe or quit trying to act like you know something. Now, folks, I I've been accused of being arrogant or mean, being on a high horse. Uh, and as you can see, I'm getting some comments relaying this type of message, which I guess it would matter if I cared what folks like this thought of me, but I really don't. And I really don't have the volition to change their opinion of me because it doesn't affect me one way or the other. And if that is the type of... Uh, reaction or response they get to things that I say, well, then they're not ready to learn this grammar anyways. 
they're not in a position to do that and they probably won't be for a long time. So they don't hold any value in my construct. So therefore I treat them as such. I treat them as something of little or no value other than it's my algorithms. So that's why I don't have any issue with giving Kuliana like this, even going so far as to say, calling them lazy, ignorant wannabe, because it really doesn't matter to me what they think. What matters to me are the folks who are serious about learning the grammar, folks who are humble, folks who are ready to do what it takes to gain autonomy. That's it. Not folks that want to go onto someone else's YouTube channel and say goofy stuff like this. This comment comes from TikTok and get a load of this. In all caps, it says man-made math. It doesn't work. So my kuleana to this is number one, what other kind of math is there besides man-made? Number two, it does work. I've been using it successfully for six plus years. And number three, all caps and no spacing is crazy. All right, so I went a little light on that one. Next comment comes from DJA2Adrian, and they say, Hey, Jason, if I remember correctly, David didn't mention, quote, capture, end quote. He used the word salvage as for the flag used to promote CSS CPSG. As for the grammar used in the papers, it has mistakes. Well, DJ, I'm glad, you know, to work backwards here, I'm glad that you realize that the paper has, that the papers have mistakes. They have a lot of mistakes. They have dozens of mistakes on every page. So I'm glad, I'm happy that you have a knowledge level that allows you to see that. Because even someone with no correct sentence structure knowledge level can see that there's a few mistakes on those pa papers, as you say. Now, to address what you're saying here, yes, David has used the word salvage, but he's also used the word capture numerous times, numerous times in numerous videos. And I articulate that to DJ when I say, hey, DJ, whomever you are, he most certainly did use the word capture, see this video. And that's just one example of him using the word capture, one of many. I know some folks just don't want to think such things about Colin David Ivan and Colin Miller. They perhaps put him on a pedestal, think he's untouchable, you know, say he's a genius that, um, on the one hand, they'll say he's such a genius that he created all this stuff or he invented all this stuff or he brought all this stuff, was using all this stuff. He could write in two different directions with two different hands, you know, so many amazing things he could do. He could remember stats, at least up until 2016. 15 or 16 he was real good with uh, remembering and repeating uh, numbers and codes and rules and stuff like that but then the same people that will say that he was a genius will also say that he was manipulated into doing this that or the third taking thus taking the accountability off him for the things that he did so what is it if you're a genius and by genius i mean very intelligent to use a fiction term, then it would probably re be really, really hard to be taken advantage of. One would think, right? So in order to someone to take advantage of someone like a genius, they would have to be a super genius. Do you get my drift? Folks, all kidding aside, all trolling aside, all jokes aside, Everyone makes choices. Everyone. And if I were you and I wanted to learn correct sentence structure, DJ, I would take off the rose colored glasses and try to see things for what they are. It doesn't make it good or bad. It just is what it is. Next comment comes from, can you drop it to and they say, I have the book, The Secret Teaching of All Ages, that he's referring to. Not the watered-down version, but the two-foot-tall one. It was originally released 500 copies, not five, according to his foundation. I wonder if there's a way to get his syntax version of it. Slowly learning, maybe I'll be able to do this one day and put the missing words in. 
I haven't read the book yet, but plan to start once. A, figure out a good way to have it mounted. Too big to hold in your lap. I'll leave any jokes aside for that last part. A, yo. So let's address what he's saying here. Now, when he said not the watered down version, but the two foot tall one, I responded back to him, watered down, like how would you know it's watered down if you didn't even read it? Because to me, watered down means uh, edited maybe, um, abridged. That's what it means to me. But he later responded back saying, no, he meant smaller versions. So I'm not sure how one would get smaller version from watered down version. But he was not referring to the contents of the book, just the size of the book. So it probably would have been better to say, not the smaller version, but the big version, you know. Um, I wonder if there's a way to get a syntax version of it. No. <clears throat> there's no way that I know of to get that. Slowly learning, maybe I'll be able to do this one day. Maybe one day, probably not in this lifetime or the next lifetime, maybe the third lifetime after this one. Unless, of course, you decide to get serious about it, contact me at the email address below and apply for a workshop. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Pi314, and they say, My good friend Orville, who orchestrates a fruit challenge, once mentioned to me he no longer responds to trolls. Producing results is his kuleana. He has placed his attention towards the better. I do commend your commitment to correctness. Look both ways, crossing an intersection. Joking here, he he, for the continuum of the gratitude. Well, what, uh, what Pi314 is referring here to is me publishing troll comments or what I construe to be troll comments and actually interacting with them. And uh, that's one of my great joys in life, actually, is to interact with trolls. It's fun to me because I don't take anything personally and I don't care one way or another what they think of me. So I correspond accordingly because right away they're violating the terms and conditions of my construct so I can do what I want with them, however I feel, you know? So I feel like when he says his friend Orville has placed his attention towards the better, I feel like Pi is implying that I'm not placing my attention towards the better when I'm addressing trolls. However, I'm feeding my own amusement. So to me, it's okay to do that once in a while. Like my grandfather said, and I think I did share this with Pi, <laughs> live a joyous life. And so... Engaging with trolls brings me joy. So that brings joy to my life. Therefore, I am uh, following my grandfather's teachings. Last comment comes from Dan Guzman. And they say, he offered a tool of power that we the people didn't make use of. We the people in our dollar sign is freedom. Their dollar sign, their slaves. And uh, he's referring to colon David I point colon Miller. And so my coolie on it to that was, I've been using said tool of power for six plus years, 100% success. So you speak for yourself, whomever you are. And uh, looking closer, I do see, it says Dan Guzman. So I can reasonably guess that it, his first name is Dan and his next name is Guzman. So they have put their name there. So some people did make use of that, Dan. Although I don't quite comprehend your last two sentences. We the people in our dollar sign is freedom. Their dollar sign, their slaves. I guess if you want to make that mental separation between this group of people and that group of people, that's your own personal uh, preference. Um, good for you. Glad that works for you. Thanks for the comment. All right, folks. Appreciate you joining me. Again, I'm getting back to doing workshops and things like that. So don't hesitate to 
contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com if you want to do that. If you want a consultation, 10 to 15 minutes video consultation, doesn't cost you anything except for your now space. Email me. Please include your full correct name. People, for whatever reason, don't ever want to quote unquote sign or autograph the bottom of their email. They don't want to put their full correct name. They want to put a nickname or they want to put ME like me or a first name. That's not complying with rule one, rule equal. Rule one, rule equal is you know who I am. I have given you the gift of my full correct name. You even know what I look like. I just ask for a little bit of consideration from you if you want to talk to me. Please include your full correct name. Thank you.